Hello, my dear friends. When it comes to challenging cases, there's always a debate of whether we have to go with small incision or phacoemulsification. Let's take this particular case. 80-year-old patient who had advanced pseudo exfoliation, and this was the maximum pupillary dilatation that we got. The amount of sphincter atrophy and sclerosis was significant, and the patient had a grade 6 nucleosclerotic cataract. And I was given full freedom to decide which modality of surgical treatment I'd like to employ. Now, when it comes to taking this decision, it largely depends on the surgeon's skill set and his experience. And I chose to go with phaco emulsification and not small incision cataract surgery, although many people would do an SICS in such a case. The reason why I chose phaco is because of this. In both phaco emulsification and SICS, it would be challenging to handle this case and only a surgeon who does a very good volume of SICS on a regular basis can take this on. However, for a surgeon like me whose SICS surgeries over the last 20 years lies in single digits, playing to my strengths actually meant that I go ahead with phaco emulsification, which I am more comfortable doing and that is exactly what I did. Although I took all the correct precautions and I took all the necessary steps that would help me navigate this case without too much of difficulties. This patient had a very small pupil and a very hard cataract and I'm going to do phaco emulsification. I have a very specific plan that is this pupil needs to be dilated with pupil dilating device. I'm going to use a Gupta ring but before that remember the sphincter sclerosis and getting a Gupta ring into the eye would be difficult. The case was done under peribulbar block in spite in spite of that, I am instilling 1% xylocaine and I am staining the anterior capsule with tripen blue. After creating the clear corneal incision and insufflating the anterior chamber with viscoelastics, I am using 2% hydroxymethyl cellulose. I would then proceed to create a small stretch pupilloplasty. Now the stretch pupilloplasty is to limber up the sclerotic sphincter and to make this pupil more pliable so that I can apply a Gupta ring later on. Trying to put a Gupta ring in a sclerotic sphincter would make it very very difficult for you. So with the gentle and mild stretch, I'm just making sure that I create small sphincter tears so that this pupil will be able to stretch when I put in a pupil dilating ring. So the pupil dilating ring is now going into the eye and the leading loop is engaged at the pupillary edge. And now I'm going to tuck the other loops and create the proper dilatation that I need. I flex it so that I realize which portion of the loop is going underneath the iris and which goes above. Knowing this helps me to direct the loop to the point where it will be easier to engage the pupillary margin. While engaging these loops, I use a Sinsky hook in one hand and an iris repositor or a rod-like device in the other hand. I flex the loop in such a way that I make sure that the portion that goes behind the iris is stretched sufficiently so it slips in. To engage the loops, you just need to concentrate on that portion of the limb that needs to go behind the iris and that portion that goes above the iris. And once you get this concentration, it's easy to engage the loops. The capsular excess has to be of sufficiently large size. Thankfully, the anterior capsule got stained even beyond the pupillary margin and I am able to create a sufficiently large capsular excess. However, because of the very mature state of the cataract and the liquefied cortex, I am not able to get a proper traction with the help of a cystotome. So, I switch on to a forceps in order to complete the capsular excess. I am using the focus very gently, making sure that I do not lose this capsular excess to the periphery because then it would complicate matters much more. So, wash off the surface epinucleus shell from the cataract. You don't have to do a cortical cleavage hydro dissection. You can see that this is a very hard grade 6 nucleosclerotic cataract. A dispersive viscoelastic to protect the endothelium is a must. I'm using viscoat. It will also deepen the chamber. 
you have to expose the tip sufficiently. 1.5 millimeters to 2 millimeters of exposure is needed in order to lollipop this nucleus adequately. The power in this case is 40% only. I'm using a multiburst mode and a vacuum of 350 millimeters of mercury. I engage the nucleus. I try to create the chop. Then I see that the nucleus is trying to rotate, which means the hold is not good. So I re-grasp this nucleus and then go deep into the crack and I'm able to create a crack that goes through the posterior plate. Always keep the lateral separation to a minimum. The reason why we have to limit the lateral separation to a minimum while cracking these nuclei is that you don't want to stretch the capsular bag. So equatorial stretch on the capsular bag that occurs when you have large lateral separation may cause zondler dialysis 90 degrees away from the point where it is stretched. I'm trying to isolate a single fragment first and then I'm holding on to the nucleus on either side of this fragment and once I get the purchase I'm able to pry this fragment piece free from the remaining part of the nucleus and that is the first part that I'm eating. So this is a kind of a sequential manner in which I am handling this nucleus. I mobilize only a very small fragment at a time. There aren't too many nuclear fragment pieces which are flying around in the anterior chamber because you know that it is the sharp fragments that can create a damage to the endothelium because of the high AFR and the high vacuum settings that you have set for this case. Once again, the dispersive viscoelastic goes in. Do not over insufflate the capsular bag because when you go in with irrigation, it may cause the posterior capsule to blow. You have to fill it sufficiently at the end of which the eye should still be slightly hypotenuse. You have to be gentle because there's no epinuclear support at all. There is no cortex. What lies between the hard nucleus and the posterior capsule is almost nothing and it's very simple and very easy to damage the posterior capsule while you are emulsifying this nucleus, which is the reason why you need to remain in the center. Make sure that the irrigating ports are well into the anterior chamber. The final piece emulsification is always a challenge. I've made a few adjustments. First is I'm filling the chamber with viscoelastic. Second, I'm bringing the piece to a very favorable location for emulsification. Third, I have reduced the amount of exposed phaco tip from 1.5 to about 0.5 millimeters. This is what you see here. And then finally, I have reduced the vacuum from 350 to 300 and I've also reduced the FACO power from 40% to 35%. So with this reduced setting and staying right in the center and very cautiously applying FACO power, I'm able to emulsify this nucleus without having too much of surge in the anterior chamber.
So this concludes the emulsification of the nucleus fragment. There's hardly any cortex. However, there's a stray bit of cortical strands in the periphery which I aspirate with the help of my coaxial IA. If you notice that each and every step in this case was under my control, which is the reason why I believe that you should play to your strengths. It is not a matter of debate which is better, whether SICS or FACO. The matter of debate actually lies in what is your actual skill set and how well you can execute it. If you are a good SICS surgeon, go ahead and do SICS in this case. But if you are confident with your FACO emulsification, then it is better to stick to a technique that you've been doing for quite some time. Apply some basic technicalities to make the procedure a success. Now finally, the pupil dilating device or the ring is cautiously and carefully removed from the anterior chamber and this concludes the procedure. This is how the patient looked on the first post-op day. Just one day after the surgery, he had a best corrected vision of 6 by 12. There was mild SK in the periphery, which I'm sure would clear in about a week's time. Thank you for your attention.